For me, knowledge has really turned into my superpower when it comes to diabetes management. So in this video, we'll be sharing some tips that have worked for us while using the Tandem T-Slim X2 insulin pump with Control IQ technology paired with the Dexcom CGM system. You can access super helpful online reference points for these questions as well. First up, let's talk about pairing the Dexcom G6 with the Tandem pump. Before connecting the Dexcom G6 to my Tandem pump, I make sure the Dexcom G6 system is communicating properly with the G6 app on my phone. I like to think of the Tandem pump as an additional display for the Dexcom CGM system. Before pairing the Dexcom transmitter with the pump, I would check that the Dexcom G6 receiver is not connected to the transmitter and that my Dexcom receiver has been turned off for about 15 to 30 minutes. One other important thing I learned is that if I already have a Dexcom G6 sensor session in progress, I don't have to stop it and start a new one when I want to pair the system with my tandem pump. I can add it as a secondary display whenever I like. I just go into my pump and click on options, then my CGM. I double check that the transmitter ID entered is correct and matches what's on the Dexcom app or transmitter box. Then I hit start sensor. Then I hit skip. Now there's also a blue button there that says code, but I make sure to hit skip. Then I'm good to go because the pump joined my active G6 sensor session. I've got one that's related that has really helped me out in the past. You've probably experienced this too, but sometimes my tandem pump becomes disconnected from my Dexcom CGM system. Here are a few things I do to troubleshoot when this happens. First, I remember that my tandem pump and the transmitter in my Dexcom CGM system are talking to each other, so they need to be physically close together. To maintain a steady connection, I make sure that the tandem pump itself and the Dexcom G6 are on the same side of my body and that the pump screen is facing away from me. The Bluetooth signal emits out of the screen, so if the screen is facing my skin, the signal won't reach my Dexcom CGM. The infusion set location doesn't matter for Bluetooth connectivity. Also, it's normal for the system to lose connection periodically for five to 15 minutes. So if this happens, I try not to worry because it's normal system performance. Once I've brought the devices back in range, I give them a few minutes to reconnect. Once they reconnect, six hours of data will backfill. The last thing that I check is to see if my Dexcom transmitter is linked with my Dexcom receiver instead of my T-Slim X2 pump. That reminds me that sometimes when I forget to charge my pump and it loses power, the screen looks different when it turns back on. I no longer see my Dexcom CGM graph and instead I see three circles on my pump screen. To get my sensor session connected again, I have found that a quick solve for this is unlocking the pump, going to the My CGM menu under Options. Then I click on Start Sensor and I hit Skip. The only thing is that if I'm putting on a new sensor, I need to be sure to enter in the sensor code so I don't have to calibrate. And in cases where I do have a failed Dexcom G6 sensor, I can easily reorder from the Dexcom app by going to Settings, Contact, Report an Issue. So true, Kylene. Let's talk about a few issues that may come up when I replace my Dexcom G6 transmitter. Yeah, that's right, the thing we have to do every 90 days. I make sure to replace the Dexcom G6 transmitter and sensor following the prompts on my G6 mobile app. Then I compare my tandem pump as the secondary display by entering the new transmitter ID on the pump and starting the sensor session. In order to avoid the tandem pump prompting me to calibrate, I make sure to enter the sensor code on the pump as well. I only need to do this when changing the G6 transmitter, not the sensor. There are times when I'll see that the option to change my transmitter ID is grayed out on my pump screen. That means I'm in an active CGM sensor session. I simply end my sensor session on the pump, and then I can change the transmitter ID. This is also the case if I want to change my G6 sensor before the 10-day session is fully expired on its own. I'll stop the sensor manually, and then I can follow the prompts to start the new sensor session. If I accidentally started a new sensor session before changing the transmitter ID, 
it's okay to hit stop sensor and enter the correct transmitter ID. I won't have to change out my sensor again. I try to be a little strategic in when I do a sensor and transmitter change to account for the two hour warm up time. Like, I don't change it right before I go to bed because I don't want to have two hours where I don't know what my glucose levels are doing. The ideal time for me is in between breakfast and lunch, but with enough time after breakfast so I have a two hour window of knowing how that breakfast impacted my glucose levels. Next, let's talk about personal profiles for the tandem pump. For me, managing my diabetes doesn't always look the same from day to day. Schedules, food intake, activity, and exercise can lead to variations in my metabolism and my insulin delivery needs. I want to be ready for what is going on in my life. Personal profiles can be so helpful. When I want to set up this new profile, it's super easy. Open menu, options, my pump, personal profiles, then hit the plus at the top right hand corner, then add to make necessary changes and then save. Great insights, Kylene. Thanks everyone for joining us and we hope these tips have been helpful. For more information, make sure to check out the Dexcom Help Center and the Tandem Support Center.